time. She makes fools of us all. She tears down kingdoms, crumbles empires, and she's the reason that I got lower back pain. The world is full of many wondrous sights, but how wonderful were they before the TikTok of eternity got involved? Let's ruminate. These are 20 archaeological sites and what they used to look like. Number 20. Statue of Zeus at Olympia Back in the day, the Statue of Zeus at Olympia in Greece was a big deal. It was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. It was made in the 430s BCE by the renowned Greek artist Phidias. This ivory and gold statue was even larger than Athena in the Parthenon. People from across the Mediterranean made the trip to see and worship this icon, and there were countless replicas. The statue pretty much set the trend for depicting Zeus in both Greek and Roman art. You'd see its influence on everything from coins to pottery and jewelry. If we close our eyes, we can get a real idea of what archaeological sites used to actually look like. For about a millennium, this work of Phidias was a must-see, especially if you were attending the ancient Olympic Games. But eventually, the statue got lost in history after being moved to Constantinople during the later Roman period. It was quite the intricate piece, made of ivory, ebony, gold, and adorned with glass and gems. Even Zeus's throne featured relief sculptures of various figures from Greek myths, many believed to be his offspring. Unlike the Athena Parthenos statue that was in front of the water, the Zeus statue was set before a pool of olive oil. This wasn't just for the looks, the oil helped keep the air humid and preserve the ivory. Seeing its reflection in the pool gave the statue an added layer of mystique. The statue was officially dedicated around 430 BCE and was later moved to Constantinople, the Eastern Roman Empire's capital, in 395 CE. Sadly, it met its end due to an earthquake or tsunami in the 5th or 6th century CE, destroying both the statue and the structure housing it. Now, if you don't want that guy Zeus to throw bolts at your butts, you better hit that like button faster than the bolt of lightning. Number 19. Machu Picchu Machu Picchu sits at an altitude of 2,430 meters, surrounded by tropical mountain forest. At the height of its glory, this was likely the crown jewel of the Inca Empire. The city's massive walls, terraces, and ramps seem as if they were naturally carved into steep cliffs. The site situated where the eastern Andes meet the upper Amazon Valley, which is a region rich in diverse flora and fauna. It's the most significant tangible link to Inca civilization. This World Heritage Site is known for its high cultural and natural importance. The area comprises over 80,000 acres of mountain slopes, peaks, and valleys surrounding the core of the property. The awe-inspiring ancient complex of La Cui de Della, meaning citadel, elevated over 7,800 feet above sea level. Constructed in the 1400s, Machu Picchu was abandoned after the Spanish conquest of the Inca Empire in the 1600s. The wider world remained largely unaware of its existence until its rediscovery in 1911. Since its abandonment in the early 16th century, the site's architecture has been well preserved, thanks to natural overgrowth and its remote location. While there have been minor alterations due to wear and tear, the site's authenticity remains intact. Number 18. Angkor Wat Angkor Wat is a massive collection of Buddhist temples in northern Cambodia, and it is a must-see for adventurers since it's the largest religious structure in the world. So, how old is this architectural marvel? Well, it spans an area four times the size of Vatican City, and Angkor Wat has been standing for almost 900 years. It was built by Khmer King Suryar Varman II. Its construction took place between 1110 and 1150 during the first half of the 12th century. It originally took 30 years to complete this temple complex, which was the heart of the Khmer Empire. It was dedicated to the Hindu god Vishnu, but the temple switched its religious focus to Buddhism by the end of the 12th century. One of the first Westerners to lay eye on this magnificent temple was Portuguese monk Antonio de Madlena, who visited in 1586. 
Later on in the 1840s, French traveler Henry Mahout essentially rediscovered Angkor Wat. Grandels and anything left to us by Greece or Rome, is how Mahout described it, bringing its grandeur to Western attention. During their rule over Cambodia in the 20th century, the French made it more accessible for tourists. However, the Cambodian Civil War and the Khmer Rouge's rule halted these efforts. Although Angkor Wat survived without significant damage, signs of conflict like bullet holes in its walls are still visible. Cambodia gained independence from France in 1953, and ever since, Angkor Wat has been under Cambodian stewardship. Number 17. Stonehenge The journey to create the iconic structure that we recognize as Stonehenge began around 3000 BCE by local inhabitants. Using basic tools in their hands, they excavated a hole. Although there's no concrete evidence that a wooden henge predated the stone one, thanks to wood's short lifespan, archaeologists have found holes that suggest wooden or stone posts might have been placed there. Moving forward a millennium, and these ancient folks started setting up the first of the enduring stones that we see today. Stonehenge wasn't built in a day, and I'm not just using a metaphor, it evolved over time. When completed, or as complete as it ever got, it featured a ring of lintels locked into place with tongue and groove and mortise and tenon joints. Inside this ring, five towering triroliths were arranged in a horseshoe shape, gradually ascending in height towards the west. There was also a flat altar stone, a circle of Welsh blue stones, and an oval of blue stones. Interestingly, two east-facing blue stones seemed purposefully paired, a wide round stone next to a taller peaked one, a design observed in other locations like Avebury and Dartmoor. Four station stones formed a square outside this inner circle, while the prominent heel stones signaled the summer solstice sunrise, and might even have been the site's original stone. An earthen bank, or henge, encircled in stones, except for the heel stone, which had its own smaller ring. Many cremation graves were found within the henge, facing the iconic stones. Number 16. Great Pyramid of Giza Built to stand the test of time, the Giza pyramids have done just that. These colossal tombs, constructed roughly 4,500 years ago, are among the lasting legacies of Egypt's Old Kingdom. The Egyptian pharaohs believed they would become gods in the afterlife. To prepare for this heavenly ascent, they not only built temples to honor the gods, but also immense pyramid-shaped tombs for themselves. These tombs were stocked with all of the essentials a ruler might need for the journey and life in the next realm. Construction of the Giza pyramids began around 2550 BC, spearheaded by Pharaoh Khufu. His Great Pyramid is the tallest structure in Giza, standing at 481 feet. It's composed of roughly 2.3 million stone blocks, with each stone block weighing an average of 2.5 to 15 tons. About 30 years later, Khufu's son, Pharaoh Khafre, erected the second pyramid at Giza. His burial complex also features the Sphinx, an enigmatic limestone statue sporting a lion's body and a king's head. It's believed that the Sphinx serves as a guardian for the royal tombs. The third pyramid in the Giza complex is notably smaller and was built by Pharaoh Menkara around 2490 BC. His pyramid is unique for having a more intricate temple dedicated to the dead. Beyond these towering pyramids, the site also contains a more expansive complex, complete with a palace, shrines, solar boat pits, and other structures. Number 15. Pompeii. Before Mount Vesuvius decided to blow its top in 79 AD, Pompeii was a bustling and affluent city located near the Bay of Naples in southern Italy. Home to a diverse population of 10,000 to 20,000 people, it was a center for trade, commerce, and social life. Residents came from various parts of the world. Greece, Rome, Egypt, you name it. Even the basics like water supply and waste management were advanced, thanks to a well-designed system of aqueducts and sewers. Economically, Pompeii was a trading powerhouse. It exported staples like fish, wine, and olive oil across the Roman Empire. When it came to religion, the people of Pompeii were polytheistic. 
Numerous shrines and altars were also constructed to honor local deities. Society in Pompeii was stratified. A select group of wealthy landowners and traders constituted the upper crust, while the working class comprised slaves, craftsmen, and laborers. Governance was democratic, to an extent, with elected officials and a city council steering the local policies and regulations. So basically, this was a thriving, important town until that faithful day when it was frozen in time. Number 14. Scara Bray. Mainland, the largest island in Scotland's Orkney archipelago, has an ancient secret. Tucked away on its rugged coast is the stone-built town of Scara Bray. Rediscovered in 1850, after a massive storm blew away the covering sand and soil, this place initially fooled researchers. They thought it dated back to the Iron Age around 500 BC, but they soon realized they had stumbled upon something much older. Scara Bray actually hails from the Neolithic period, over 5,000 years ago. Radiocarbon dating places its existence between 3,180 BCE and 2,500 BCE, making it older than both Stonehenge and the Great Pyramids of Giza. When the village was thriving, it was cleverly hidden atop a midden, a mound of trash and animal bones which camouflaged and insulated the stone structures beneath it. The layout of the village is relatively uniform, about 10 stone buildings, each approximately 387 square feet in size. Inside each house, you'd find a central stone fireplace, a small dresser for valuables, and stone beds that likely featured cushions made of straw or heather, and were covered with deer or sheepskin. The Neolithic inhabitants of Scara Bray weren't that different from us, biologically speaking. They were Homo sapiens who engaged in farming, hunting, and fishing. During their time, a significant lifestyle shift was taking place. People were moving away from a nomadic hunter-gatherer existence to settle down in permanent communities for the very first time. Number 13. Acropolis of Athens Back in the day, the Acropolis was a grand, lavishly adorned fortress, but now it seems more like a collection of ancient stones. Imagine the vivid colors and intricate details that once adorned its walls and sculptures. Some of these statues reached heights of 27 feet and were visible from the sea. Inside the Parthenon, there was an even taller statue. The Acropolis has worn many hats over the years. Sometimes it acted as the spiritual and cultural heart of Athens. In tougher times, it transformed into a fortified hideaway, where Athenians could seek refuge during attacks on the city. This iconic landmark has seen its share of turmoil since its construction over two millennia ago. Case in point, the disastrous explosion of 1687 when the Ottomans controlled the area. Storing gunpowder there turned out to be a pretty bad idea. As for the layout, the grand entrance to the Acropolis is known as the Propylae. Just south of this entrance sits the compact Temple of Athena Nike. The Parthenon, or Temple of Athena Parthenos, occupies a central spot on the Acropolis. To the east, near the exit and north of the Parthenon, is the Erechtheum. The Theater of Dionysus, with its long history of modifications, lies to the south of the Acropolis Plateau. And not too far off, after undergoing some renovations, is the Odeon of Herodes Atticus. Number 12. Colosseum The Romans had a penchant for all things grand, and the Colosseum is a grand example. Originally named the Flavian Amphitheater, this colossal structure was completed in 80 AD. Construction began in 72 AD under Emperor Vespasian, who envisioned it as a way to unify Roman society. Since he passed away before its completion, his son Titus inaugurated the amphitheater with a marathon of 100 days of continuous games. What we see today is just a fraction of its former glory. Back in its heyday, the Colosseum was an architectural marvel boasting over 80 entrances and large statued arches. The three-tiered arena could accommodate more than 50,000 spectators. Where you sat was dictated by your social rank. Naturally, the emperor snagged the prime location, complete with a special stage. Senators, nobles, and knights followed in descending order, with slaves and the lower class taking the remaining spots. The Colosseum was essentially a stage for valor and violence, the hub for brutal spectacles. Crowds were thrilled from morning to night with gladiatorial combats, public executions, and exotic animal hunts. 
During its inaugural games, which lasted 100 days and nights, thousands of gladiators, criminals, and animals like lions, bears, and giraffes met their end. At times, the arena was even flooded to stage mock naval battles, featuring the likes of whales and crocodiles. Number 11. Hadrian's Wall For nearly three centuries, Hadrian's Wall acted as the northern frontier of the Roman Empire. The order to build this massive structure came from Hadrian himself prior to his visit to England in 122 AD. Stretching from Wallsend on the Tyne in the east to Bows on Soloway in the west, the wall covered 73 miles, or 80 Roman miles. It's the most famous of all the Roman walls and even earned World Heritage Site status in 1987. Britain had been under Roman control since 43 AD. By around 100 AD, the northernmost Roman military units in Britain were stationed between the Tyne and Solway rivers, linked by a road known today as the Standing Gate. According to a historical account written 200 years after the Hadrian's, he put many things right and was the first to build an 80-mile wall from sea to sea. This was to separate the Romans from the, I'm using air quotes, barbarians. Work on Hadrian's Wall possibly commenced that year and took a minimum of six years to complete. The original design featured either a stone or turf wall accompanied by two observation towers, a guarded gate for every mile, and a broad, deep ditch in front of the wall. Before the project was finished, an additional 14 forts were added, followed by an earthwork known as the Vallum to the south of the wall. Number 10. Teotihuacan Teotihuacan, translating to the place where the gods were created, is a sacred city situated about 35 miles northeast of Guatemala City. Iconic structures like the Temple of Quetzalcoatl and the Pyramid of the Sun and Moon were erected between the 1st and 7th centuries AD. These were constructed based on specific geometric and symbolic designs. Teotihuacan stood as a cultural hub in Mesoamerica, and its influence in art and culture extended far and wide. At its peak, the city sprawled over 25 square miles. Despite the enormous size of its ceremonial center, which only constitutes about 10% of the total area, excavations reveal that residential zones and palaces also existed. Notable neighborhoods included La Ventilla, Tetitla, Zacuala, and Yayahuala in the west, and Zala and Tepontitla to the east. The city met its end in the 7th century when it was consumed by fire and subsequently abandoned. Teotihuacan has long been recognized as one of Mexico's most significant historical sites. The first measurements were taken in 1864, followed by the initial excavations in 1884. From 1905 to 1910, some restoration work was done, including an arbitrary fifth level added to the Pyramid of the Sun by its discoverer, Leopoldo Batres. Number 9. Colossus of Rhodes Rhodes has long captured the imagination of people worldwide, often described by historians as the best among all Greek cities. In its heyday, Rhodes boasted a cityscape filled with public figures, marketplaces, stadiums, harbors, and educational centers that covered philosophy and other subjects. Perhaps the most awe-inspiring construction in Rhodes was the Colossus, built between 292 and 280 BC. Standing around 98 feet tall, this metal statue represented Helios, the god of the sun. Construction of the Colossus spanned 12 years, but it met its end a few decades later due to an earthquake in 226 BC. There's ongoing debate among scholars about whether the statue straddled the harbor with one foot on each side. Some argue it's more likely the figure stood in conventional Greek pose on one side of the harbor. The statue had an internal iron framework that functioned like a skeleton, onto which sculpted brass plates were added to resemble Helios's muscle and skin. By the 7th century AD, the island of Rhodes fell under Arab control. What remained of the Colossus, already toppled by an earthquake, was dismantled and sold off as scrap metal. Number 8. Chichen Itza Chichen Itza is one of Mexico's most awesome historical sites. Built by the Itza, often called Water Sorcerers, the city emerged in the 5th century AD and continues to be a place for modern Mayans to pray. Despite the challenging terrain, they gather some truly impressive cities there. These cities were governed by enigmatic and spiritual kings. They were known for their constant power struggles. 
Then, around the middle of the 9th century, the cities were mysteriously abandoned. Around this period, the locus of power shifted to the Yucatan Peninsula. New cities sprang up there. Chichen Itza was the most prominent among these. The name Chichen Itza means Mouth of the Well, which is Chichen, and Water Witches, Itza. Number 7. Gobekli Tepe Klaus Schmidt, a German historian, began excavations on a mountain in Turkey a quarter of a century ago. What he discovered was unlike anything he'd seen before. Schmidt uncovered over 20 circular stone structures on Gobekli Tepe, a limestone hill near Ufra that translates to Belly Hill in Turkish. The largest structure spanned 20 meters and featured two intricately carved pillars standing 18 feet high in its center. These heavy pillars, weighing up to 10 tons, were cut to resemble imposing figures with crossed arms and belts made of fox fur. Crafting such structures would have been an enormous feat for a society that hadn't yet domesticated animals or developed pottery, let alone metal tools. These structures are dated to at least 11,000 years old, which makes them the oldest known large-scale constructions built for a purpose other than defense. Although they found tens of thousands of animal bones at the site, all were from wild species. No evidence was found of cultivated grains or other domesticated plants. Gobekli Tepe predates Stonehenge by 6,000 years, and much about its intricate carvings and the lives of its builders remains enigmatic. Number 6. Golden House of Nero The Golden House of Nero was a grand palace Nero constructed in Rome between 65 and 68 AD, following the Great Fire of 64. During its construction, Nero claimed over 200 acres of central Rome to make room for this lavish residence. He'd already started building another palace, the Domus Transitoria, designed to link buildings on Palatine Hill to the gardens of Messenas and other imperial estates on surrounding hills. He expanded the area even more to include parts of Caelian and Opian Hills and the valley between them. The entire space was transformed into a sprawling park featuring a central artificial lake. This lake was later filled in by Emperor Vespasian to build the Colosseum. A ground colonnaded entrance and foyer were situated at the eastern edge of the Roman Forum, on the Velia Slopes. Inside, a massive bronze statue of Nero, plated in gold, greeted visitors. The wing for daily living overlooked the artificial lake from the Opian Hill. The Golden House isn't as well known today as one might expect. It became unpopular because Nero had seized public land for its construction, leading his successors to quickly repurpose large sections of it for public use or new structures. Pliny the Elder wrote of its exquisite wall paintings and stucco art, but by the 16th century, only subterranean paintings in the palace's caves remained visible, which did inspire artists like Raphael. After 15 years of restoration work, part of the Domus Aura was reopened to the public in 1999. Number 5. Easter Island Easter Island also referred to as Rapa Nui, is a Chilean territory located in the eastern Pacific Ocean. It's the easternmost island in the Polynesian archipelago, and it's famous for its massive stone figures. Before British Captain James Cook showed up in 1774, the island had apparently been through a civil war. What Cook found was a decimated, impoverished Polynesian community of around 600 to 700 men and fewer than 30 women. The large stone statues, once revered, had mostly been intentionally toppled over. By 1786, when French explorer Jean-Francois de Gallo, Comte de la Perou, visited, the population had rebounded to about 2,000. La Perou's attempts to introduce animals to the island didn't work out. Starting in 1792, various sailing ships, including whaling vessels, started visiting. The population climbed to around 3,000 by 1860, but plummeted to just 111 by 1877 due to a major slave raid from Peru and a smallpox outbreak. The numbers started to recover towards the end of the 19th century. Brother Eugene Rode, a French Catholic priest, became the first outsider to reside on the island in 1864. Just four years later, by 1868, most islanders had converted to Christianity. People from Tahiti began settling in the area in 1870, initiating sheep farming. Today, the island is renowned for its more than 600 colossal stone figures and the remains of large stone platforms known as ahas, which featured open spaces on their inland sides. 
These ruins are considered examples of exquisite craftsmanship. Number 4. Petra Petra, originally known as Rakhmu by its inhabitants, is a historic and archaeologically rich city in southern Jordan. It's famous for its rocked carved architecture and sophisticated water system. Petra is often dubbed the Rose City due to the pinkish hue of its stone. The poet John Bergen notably described it as a rose-red city half as old as time in a song in 1845. Petra is situated next to a mountain and nestles in a basin surrounded by hills, forming the eastern edge of the Araba Valley that extends from the Dead Sea to the Gulf of Aquaba. The Sik, a mile-long gorge, offers a dramatic scenic entrance to the city, leaning directly to the Kazne. The area around Petra has been inhabited since at least 7000 BC. The Nabataeans, Arab wanderers, likely started settling in what would become their capital city as early as 4th century BC. However, evidence of Nabataean presence wasn't confirmed until the 2nd century BC. By then, Petra was well established as their city. Capitalizing on its proximity to incense trade routes, the Nabataeans transformed Petra into a key trading center in the region. Number 3. The Great Wall of China The Great Wall of China was constructed to safeguard China's northern frontier. Originally built between the 7th and 4th centuries BCE, a good portion of the wall still exists today. In the 3rd century BCE, Qin Shi Huang became the first emperor of a unified China connected several individual walls and created a cohesive defense line. Traditionally, Shanghai Pass in eastern Hebei province on the coast of Bohai was considered the easternmost point of the Great Wall. The wall was estimated to stretch about 4,160 miles, and that's not counting its various offshoots. But then research starting in the 1990s discovered wall segments in Liaoning province. Further aerial and satellite observations indicated that the wall extends through most of the province. In 2009, it was announced that the length of the Ming era wall was even grander than previously thought. In fact, the Great Wall is an amalgamation of defensive structures built by different Chinese states over the centuries. For many of those years, these states were as concerned about threats from neighboring states as they were about invasions from more distant foes. Number 2. Gigantia Gigantia is a significant historical spot. It houses an ancient Neolithic temple complex. You'll find it perched on Zagra Hill in Gozo, one of Malta's islands in the Mediterranean. Evidence shows that people have lived on this island since around 5000 BC, specifically during the Gar Dalam phase in the early Neolithic period. So in the 4th millennium BC, a fresh wave of settlers caved to the island and started constructing temples. The Gigantia complex consists of two completed stone temples and a third one that's still a work in progress, commonly referred to as the Giant's Tower in the local Gozatan lore. The term giants actually derived from the Maltese word gigant. Both the southern temple, constructed around 3600 BC, and the northern one, built around 2900 BC, came to life during the Giganta phase, which spanned from 3600 to 3000 BC. This timeline places Giganta as the world's second oldest man-made religious structure and one of the oldest freestanding stone buildings on Earth. Digging into the archaeology, oh, pun intended, it appears that animal sacrifices were a part of the religious practices here. There's also evidence suggesting birth rituals devoted to a mother goddess. People continued to inhabit Giganta up until around a millennium ago, which lands us in the middle of the 3rd millennium BC. After that, the Maltese temple culture mysteriously vanished, potentially due to changing climate conditions like temperature shifts and droughts. Number 1. Lighthouse of Alexandria The Lighthouse of Alexandria is on the list of the seven wonders of the world. So Stratus of Nidus is credited with its construction, possibly on behalf of Ptolemy I Soter. It was completed around 280 BC during the reign of Soter's son, Ptolemy II. Standing at over 350 feet tall, this tower was situated on the island of Pharos. This is within Alexandria's harbor. At the time, only the pyramids of Giza outstripped it in height among man-made structures. A fire burned at the pinnacle to guide sailors at night. Curiously, the lighthouse didn't make it onto wonders lists until the 6th century CE. Prior to that, the walls of Babylon held its spot. 
In the late 1400s, what remained of the lighthouse was repurposed by Mamluk King Quite Bay to construct a fort. So, can you imagine what it was like to live in any of these amazing places back in the day? What's your favorite historical period? As always, let us know in the comments below, we're dying to hear about it. And don't forget to check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.